We're gonna measure for a TV that's gonna go in the guest room. I already and, talked about that. Dang it. Welcome back to another episode of We're Gonna Get This Shed Done. Day three. Day three. Yeah. Yeah. It's so bright out here. <laughs> We're gonna make this quick. <laughs> We're back in the solar shed. Yep. Still working on final coats with the addition of going over it with our plastic trowel to compress it. So what we're gonna do is mist the wall that we did last night and just press really hard and that kind of brings the clay up to the surface and you can smooth it out and- The clay just, or the sand? It brings the clay up to the okay. surface and you, you smooth it over everything and it will help prevent any cracking. Yeah, so far. But there's no cracking. Yeah, anymore. there wasn't any cracking anyway, yeah. which is amazing. Which I did this yesterday, but the more you do it, the smoother it will be and the less chance of cracks you'll get. Right, so that'll be real quick, just kind of going back over what we did yesterday and then. Then we just continue on. Yeah. And 99 is ready to get going. 99's like, why are you guys all in the solo shed and I'm not? All right, let's go. Okay. The other area that we've finished, I've always done the compression compression trowel, and I've had lots of people say you should just do sponge, but I liked the compression compression trowel, but it hurts my arm. <laughs> so I'm gonna try the sponge in here and see if I like it. Um, it is a fine balance of making sure your sponge isn't too wet or too dry, and like you want to make sure. You go over the entire wall and not just like do a random spot here and then here and it'll look weird. So I'm going to try it and see if I like it. I'm going to let it dry and then I'll look at it tomorrow and decide if I want to do the trowel or the sponge. There is no room for me inside the solar shed. Everyone's busy sifting and putting on the interior coat and I don't really have anything to do because we just, we don't have enough trials and it can only go so fast. So I'm gonna work on another small project. Well, actually it's not that small, it's pretty big. It's the internet. If you followed us for a while, you probably know about our robust internet setup on the Airstream and it's based around cellular hotspots and plans and boosters and Wi-Fi routers that talk natively to those hotspots. Um, I won't get into all the nerdy details here. Well, probably I will actually. We really road tested this setup all over the United States, on grid, off grid, in you know, every possible scenario you can imagine. So we have two types of antennas, a directional, which you point straight at a cell antenna, or an omnidirectional, which is this guy, right? And so this will just sort of throw a signal in a, like a 360 degree area instead of directly at a certain spot. So the question here was when we got on the property, because we've continued to use this setup since we got here. We could get DSL run and it's only like 10 megabits a second. We're getting like close to 100 with our AT&T hotspot, which is crazy. And I know a lot of you are gonna ask about Starlink. It's just not really available here yet. I don't know that it would handle the winds we get here very well. And also we have a lot of mountains close by and it would, you would have trouble with that trajectory. I don't know, maybe one day Starlink will be an option for us, but right now it's too expensive. It's not much faster than what we have. Uh, it's a little fragile. Um, it's still in beta, like, you know, maybe we'll get to one day. But for now, our cell setup is working great. So there's really not any need to change that, but what we do need to do is we need to shift it from the Airstream being the centralized location to the solar shed because that will be the office and that is where the, the internet is gonna be centralized for the whole property. 
So here's the idea. I did some tests and it was good enough for me just to go with an Omni. So I'm gonna use an Omnidirectional. We're gonna mount it on the outside of the solar shed as high up as we possibly can on the side of the roof. But here's the other part of this. I still need to get internet in the Airstream. So what I did is I bought a second router. So we're gonna keep the router in the Airstream, put a second router in the solar shed. The thing about this router is that it has three, you know, you can screw an antenna on the back of it to increase the Wi-Fi range, whatever. Almost all uh, routers will do this. But what we found and what we actually set up in the Airstream is that you can put one of these on it. You gotta have to get a special cable, but you can put one of these on it and it will actually broadcast that Wi-Fi signal outside of the trailer. Now it's not a very strong signal coming out of this, but what's cool about this is that it also acts as a Wi-Fi booster. So if there is a Wi-Fi signal nearby, it can actually pull the data both ways and give you a stronger signal to an existing Wi-Fi network. So my experiment is, is that I'm gonna basically take the whole setup we have in the Airstream and move it to the solar shed. So we're gonna move the WeBoost cell booster in there and connect it to this, right? Like, like we have, so that we increase our cell signal. I'm gonna put the hotspots in there. Hotspots will go out to the router. And then out of the router, I'm going to connect one of these and it will broadcast that Wi-Fi network over the property. Now again, it's not pushing it very far, but if I still have the PEP wave in the Airstream and it's also pulling the Wi-Fi signal down, I think it'll work to just leave it like that. Now the question is, how much speed are we gonna lose going from a wireless network out there to a wireless network inside the trailer? Uh, I don't know. And that's my big experiment. So we're gonna see how well that works. If it doesn't work, then obviously at some point, like especially when we build the house, it's going to be roughly in the same area as the Airstream is now. Then we'll run data cables, right? We'll figure that out later. But for now, like I said, this is my experiment to see how well it's going to go. Now, I'm not wiring anything today. These things come with a, with a very simple mounting system. So it bolts to the bottom of this. And then this bracket, you can kind of put it anywhere. So I'm going to put it on the back side of the solar shed because that's where our pipes are run to run the wires to these antennas. I'm gonna stick them on the side, probably use the screws that came with the roofing material because I think to get it up high enough, we're gonna to have to go into that that side, the metal side on the roof. And and then we'll just mount both of these here because I have two, right? Uh, one for the cell, one for the Wi-Fi. The bands aren't really gonna mess with each other too bad, so I'll just put them a little bit apart. And that's what I'm gonna do while Ashley's working on the inside. So one other thing, I mean, the bracket is nice, but it doesn't come with a cable and likely even if it did, it wouldn't be long enough, right? So you'll probably have to order your own cables. We've been doing this for several years. We did it for the Airstream and now for this uh, from a company, I think it's Air 280 or 820. I, I'll put a link in the description, but basically you choose what you want the connector to be on one end and what you want the connector to be on the other end and how long it needs to be. And then they, they ship it to you. So I've got those here in the box too. Like I said, I'm not gonna run those today because uh, we still have the interior coat to do on the inside of the office where those wires will be. So I don't want them to be in the way while Ashley's working. But what's cool is, is once these are mounted up there, then it'll just be a matter of threading it through the pipes and then connecting them up and we should be good to go. Cool, we are one step closer to having internet in the solar ship. Hi Nine, what is it? What'd you get? Nine, Nine, did you find the beetle? Look, it's moving. Look! Look! Look, it's right there!
All right, so Ashley's still working on the inside. So I'm gonna do something kind of fun. I'm gonna research TVs because we're getting to the point where we need to know how we're mounting the TV in the circle room, what size we can fit, what kind of mount we're gonna use. Um, so I gotta do some research there and see how big those things are and if they're gonna fit and also what kind of TV we want. I got a job in the valley, but today I didn't go. So my rough guess on the size of TV that will sort of fit in that space, will fit on the curved wall, won't, you know, come into the actual doorway that you walk through and not feel comically large for the space is about 50 inches. Still a pretty big TV. You could probably go smaller if we want, but you know, we've been stuck with a pretty small computer monitor for the last five years. So I figure we're going to get a TV. Let's get one that's a decent size. <laughs> that way we can watch movies and it's going to feel a little bigger. The kids can play their Switch on it. They've been playing, you know, all their Switch games on that tiny little screen for the last several years. So I want to make sure this is like something we can get excited about, right? So I was just walking around and we had this piece of plywood. It turns out it's basically cut to like exactly the size of a 50 inch TV, which is weird. So let's go see if it fits. Well, we're not wrapping up the end of the day. Our end of day has not appeared yet. What we're going to do Bye -bye. is measure for the bed. You, you want to get that down. will be in our guest room. Come here. She's being weird. You go for it. <laughs> we're going to measure for a TV that's going to go in the guest room. I already and, talked about that. Dang it. I already introed the TV section. Then I'm just going to get back to work. Well, we've we bed. Oh. Yeah. We're going to measure for a bed in the guest room. Come join us. Headboard. Middle of the bed. Foot of the bed. Oh, that's close. We have about two foot to come into the guest room and about a foot around the circle. This bed will be a circle bed. Just Ooh. wait. Just wait for it. Circle bed. Yeah. And let's talk about. Oh, did you show where the TV is going? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, it's Come going in. right there. Yeah. So we'll be laying on the bed, and the TV will be right there, and there'll be plenty of room for all the kids to like cuddle around. Here's our view. Ready? I'm gonna switch to wide. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, back to work. I still, I've gotten about halfway done. Yeah, it looks so good. So, I just have to keep working. This is the short wall over here. Is it? Yeah. Looks the same. We're gonna call it the short wall. <laughs> okay. I hustle and motivate. Follow me, I know the way. Grind hard on a every night and day. And the 40 bank hard in the air, I don't play. I aim for the neck of the juggler. So don't people think I'm a smuggler. Don't get it confused, bro, I'm just a hustler. Been in the gym, so I got my muscle up. What'd you find? Ooh, that's a pack rat tail. And foot. And a foot, ooh, gross. I told you. What, do you think the cats did that? Oh yeah. Nine-Nine? Like Nine-Nine, leave it. You don't need to eat pack rat for dinner.
Wrapping up day three. Didn't, Still not done with the gusher. Did not go as fast as we thought. Uh, it's just, the circle is so deceiving because it doesn't look that big, but it's a lot more surface area than you would think. Yeah. Yeah. So it takes I'm a lot. I'm not sure I understand. No one does here. No one understands. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, so we're still not done with the circle. Another day or two. I don't know. Circle will probably take one more day. And then we got to finish the rectangle. Yeah. But. We're, we're getting I mean, a little closer yeah, every day. Yeah, that's, I mean, we're getting close to working on the floor. Yeah. Which is crazy, if you think about it. I may have to find something else for someone to do because nobody's going to want to watch me put plaster on for six days. Right? You think it'll take that long to do the floor? We still have to do the rectangle. We haven't done the rectangle. We got a bunch of it done already. There's a lot left to do guys. I'm sorry it's gonna be the same thing for quite a while no, until it's just we get for, to the floor. Just for a few days. Just for just for a few days. Let's see how long this okay. is because he says a few days. I'm thinking another week. I think it'll take us three more days. That's my Okay. Yeah. You think it'll be done on day six? The inside, like the inside. Uh huh. Yeah, I think so. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Until next time. We'll see you tomorrow.